visual philosophy. Today I am going to do some encaustic experiments. I am going to try to embed some LED lights and I'm also going to play around with a little iron that I uh, recently got for melting the wax directly onto the painting. So um, should be fun. <laughs> Base. I've also got these little ones that I'm going to use um, for just some experiments. I've got some dichroic uh, film that I want to play around with and see how it works um, with the encaustic, see if it stays that nice sheen. Um, I've got some little LEDs that I'm going to play around with, seeing how they uh, react to being embedded. Um, and just kind of experiment and see, see what works, see what doesn't. First step is I'm going to coat my painting or this panel with the encaustic medium, the clear medium. It's, uh, Right. Let's see what I'm doing. So I can scrape back a little bit while it's still kind of warm and get some cool textures. If it was colder, it'd be a lot harder to, to scrape back. But. this guy. Let's see what this looks like. 
because it has such a cool quality. I don't want to lose that by embedding or putting wax over it, but we'll see. That's why I'm experimenting. the wax on but the wax totally obscures it and I'm afraid it's just gonna pop off this vinyl so that was a fail we'll see when it cools if it pops off or not uh, but I can use this for embedding my little LEDs so there's like these little lights in there. I want to see if that's going to show up. Take this a bit at a time. Something to hold it down, I think, while it cools. Hmm, this might also be a fail. Pouring a thicker amount might work. Experiment number two. I don't want it to look messy and gross. I want it to be clean and sophisticated. I'll have to see about that one. Okay, so I've done some embedding here, which I can show you what that uh, looks like when I turn on the lights, which is kind of cool. Um, you can really see these ones are very uh, bright. So the little bit of encaustic paint that went over them didn't dim them that much, but they're there. It's a little bit messy, so I'm not sure I really like that, um, but it worked. And now I'm gonna try to see if uh, actually pouring it in or creating a little trough that will eliminate some of this messiness might actually help uh, with what I'm trying to achieve, which is more of a smooth finish like this, but uh, have that embedded light. And because the lights are dimensional, that's what's uh, playing a role in, in all that lumpiness, but I really don't want the lumpiness. So, experiments continue. First I'm gonna do one more little tape here and show you how I did that. Just created this kind of trough pouring. So I've got one more of these. Just move that out of the way. Get that out of the way. Uh, get my blue tape over here. And basically just put it on like 
this so that there was a little bit underneath. And creased it. A little bit trickier. Trying to keep it even, you know, an even uh, depth. And I'm not going to do a lot of painting on these under layers because I just kind of want to see what that's going to look like for the pouring. One thing I will have to do is make a hole or something for the lights to pass around. I've got these lights. So if I want these to be embedded, you know, they have to come out somewhere. So it's gonna be like my, my little hole. Come out. So I'm gonna use this to pour the um, wax directly into that little, that little guy. Aside for now, put it out with this brush. All right, brush, but I am going to use this to hold it so I can hold and pour. I don't have to get my little hands super um, waxy. Gotta work kind of fast with this stuff. Pouring it in. We'll see how my little trough works. <laughs> okay. Obviously, the goal is to get it as uh, as even as possible. We'll see how that turns out. I'll probably have to scrape the sides when it cools. Um, yeah, we'll see. We've lost, we've lost a lot of the design, but I'm hoping that when we turn the light on, it'll sh kind of shine through and this can be like a base coat, but you know, we'll see. And I'm going to also try to put this clear, um, let's see, I've got the, this is what happened when I coated the holographic paper, or vinyl I guess, with it, and it didn't crack off like I thought it was going to, um, but it is still very matte, and of course I want to be able to see some of that through it, so I'm going to try to do the same thing with this sheer picture and uh, see what that does you know just to get that dimension and see if the wax over this will make a difference it's just my experimentation I can always scrape it off and do something different if I want uh, and then this iron will also play a role in how um, how that gets put on there too. So okay, now it's time to coat the uh, pictures with the clear wax, and then I'll try to fine tune it with my iron. See how that works. Okay, 
so far so good. I was expecting a little bit of fogginess, so that's good. Because the wax, even though it's clear, does have that kind of milkiness to it. And I'm trying to do it from the center out so that it doesn't buckle and warp and goes on the smoothest. What I like about this transparent paper is that it's transparent, so you can see the layers underneath. Another little layer here. And we're starting to melt the surface. So it's not totally smooth like you would get with fusing with a heat gun or a um, the torch but it is a little bit more delicate in the sense let's turn it up a little bit that if I had an area that I didn't want to um, you know I just wanted to be a little bit more delicate with Because when it's just pushing the wax and not actually melting it, then you know it's probably not hot enough. I'm just pushing it around. But this is going to be probably good for, I'm anticipating this being good for blending too. Blending colors. So let's try. I'm using more of the flat part to sort of reactivate a broader area. Which is weird. I don't have feel like I have that much control because I can't really see what I'm doing. So I'm not loving this. It. Just gonna take my paper towel, bunch it up so my hand doesn't touch it while it's still warm, and then just swipe it off. I'm gonna turn that off because that's the end of iron experiments. While it's still warm, I might take my big flat loop tool shape some of this. Again, it's so warm. Today it's just sort of melting right off. And if I wanted to be a little more to remove a little bit less of a broader area. We'll go to my diamond core. Diamond core tools. And use one of those. Either do a line or 
where's the one that I here we go. This little guy, look this little guy. Okay. They're designed for clay, but they're so good for Experiment day. Because some experiments work, some don't. Why am I just like that? Alright, so what did we learn from this experiment? Uh, I don't really dig the iron, it's not really my thing. Maybe I just don't know how to use it right. Um, but I do, I, I'm glad that this is successful, that I can embed these clear photos um, and get a little bit of dimension that way. Uh, yeah, I think that's okay.